Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be covering maternity, but to be more specific, I'm going to be going over chorionic villus sampling. And this is a great video for you to watch. If you haven't watched the one on amniocentesis, watch it afterwards just so you can have an idea of the difference between these two uh, types of uh, procedures. Now, before we get started, as always, I'm going to ask you to please support me and support this channel by liking the video, pressing the thumbs up button, and subscribing to the channel if you have done so already. Don't forget, I have audio lessons available on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. So let's get started, guys. Chorionic village sampling, take a look. It says the combined advantages of earlier diagnosis and rapid results made chorionic villus sampling, known as CVS, a popular technique for genetic studies in the first trimester. And this is absolutely true because this testing you can do before amniocentesis. Remember amniocentesis, that can be done after 14 weeks, right? But take a look. When performed after the first trimester, the procedure is better known as late CVS or placental biopsy. After the first trimester, known as late CVS or placental biopsy. CVS can be performed in the first or second trimester, ideally between, look at this, 10 and 13 weeks of gestation. So you don't have to wait until after 14 weeks like you do for amniocentesis for testing, okay? Ideally, 10 be between 10 and 13 weeks of gestation for CVS. This involves the removal of small tissue specimen from the fetal portion of the placenta. Now, this is another difference. When we were talking about amniocentesis, not only did we have to wait until after 14 weeks, what were we testing? The fluid. But here with the CVS, what are we testing? The small tissue, a small tissue uh, specimen from the actual placenta. This tissue reflects the genetic makeup of the fetus. Keep going. Pregnancy, oh, over here, CVS is a relatively safe procedure. Pregnancy loss with CVS is similar to that of second semester amniocentesis. So it's still rare, but it can still happen. Safety alert. Again, same as amniocentesis, because of the possibility of fetal maternal hemorrhage, women who are RH negative should receive uh, the Rogam after CVS to prevent isoimmunization, regardless of whether the procedure is pre performed transcervically or transabdominally, unless the fetus is known to be RH negative. Now, let me tell you guys something. For testing purposes, I have yet to see a test question where we know for sure that that fetus is RH negative. Every test question I have ever seen, what we know is either the mom is RH negative or RH positive. If she's RH positive, great, we're not worried. But if she is RH negative, we're going to be concerned. And guess what? After that procedure, she needs to get that Rogam. Okay, if she's RH negative, that is where the concern comes. Why? Why does she need to get it? Because this is something that is invasive. Let's keep going. Because amniocentesis and CVS are invasive tests, their use is associated with a small but concerning risk for pregnancy loss and infection. So even though this rarely happens, guys, it's still a possibility because it's an invasive procedure. So that's something that's important to know. And guys, that is your um, CVS in a nutshell. So please, if you haven't done so already, go back for amniocentesis and watch that video just so you can know the difference between the two please in the comment section. Let me know what you thought about this video. Let me know what you'd like to see me cover more extensively. And please don't forget, I have audio lessons available on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. Thank you so much for watching this video and you guys will catch me on the next video.